Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, today I just wanted to talk through um, my nutrition for my 50 mile race that I've got coming up. I am not a nutritionist, I'm not an elite athlete, I'm not sponsored by any nutrition brand, so this is just the stuff that I'm gonna be taking that has worked well for me over the last couple of years. Um, and the whole purpose of this video really is to give you some ideas for some stuff that you can try um, and some rough quantities of things if you're not really sure where to start. So yeah, let's get right into it. So first things first then, I just kind of wanted to talk about the rough quantities before I go into detail about what I'm actually taking. So I normally work to about 200 to 300 calories an hour. Um, and that kind of, if you're not really sure where to start, that is a good starting point. Um, I'd say that would probably work for the vast majority of people. Obviously there'll be some people out there that um, need a lot more or can run on a lot less, uh, but that is a good starting point and that's what I try and aim for. And then most of the fuel is actually gonna be coming from carbohydrates. So I try to steer clear of like really high fat things. Um, or protein, I just mainly focus on the carbohydrates. So a good rule of thumb is um, to aim for one gram of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight. So for example, if you weigh 70 kilos, then aim for 70 grams of carbs per hour. And you can find all that information on the back of whatever product you're taking. The other thing to bear in mind is electrolytes and sodium levels. Um, if it's a particularly hot day, you're gonna be wanting to take more of that on board. I'll go into a bit more detail about that um, in a second, but yeah, something to bear in mind is your sodium levels. Right, so now we'll just go into a bit more detail about the stuff that I'm taking. So I like to have a good mix of like sports nutrition and real food. Um, this is a 50 mile race, so if it was something longer, like 100 miles, I'll probably rely a bit more on actual food. Um, Whereas because this is relatively short, I suppose you could say, I'll be getting most of my calories from like sports nutrition. For me, for this race, I'm planning to take about like nine to 10 hours. Um, so going off 200 to 300 calories, that's like 1800 to 3000 calories for the whole race. So lots of my calories are actually gonna be coming from drinks, so I, I'm gonna be using Tailwind. Uh, it's just something that I've used a lot over the last couple of years. And thankfully at the race, it's actually a sponsor of the race. So they're gonna have like big buckets that you can fill up your drinks with. So I don't actually have to take any of this with me, which is super handy. But yeah, this is like a complete fuel. So you don't actually need to supplement this with anything. I just quite like to just to mix it up. but. Yeah, so this is a full like carbohydrate drink mix with electrolytes. So what I was saying before about electrolytes, that's got everything all in there already. <clears throat> and there's 100 calories per scoop of that. And I'd really recommend if you've had stomach issues in the past, then start on something like that and get most of your calories from drinks rather than food because it's a lot easier for your stomach to digest. So yeah, that's definitely a good starting point. Other ones that aren't tailwinds, you could look at Science and Sport Beta Fuel or the Morton drink mix are quite good. Um, but just have a look, just make sure that it's actually a carbohydrate fuel rather than just an electrolyte mix because there are some powders that are just electrolyte and they don't have any calories. So if you want to get calories from your drinks, make sure that it actually has carbohydrates in. So yeah, the other thing that I'll be heavily reliant on are gels. So I. I quite like these goo gels because they're 100 calories each, so it's quite easy to calculate how much I'm gonna need for the race. Um, and there's so many different flavors, so it keeps things really interesting. So I'll probably have about, well, I'll take maybe eight to 10 of those with me. Um, and then these uh, Cliff Bar Shop Box, I quite like. They're just like kind of sweets, essentially like jelly sweets, which are quite, quite nice. And then in terms of real, real food, uh, I'll probably take some nuts, just some salted cashews, just this whole bag. Um, and then I have some sweets. I really like fizzy sweets, so I'll probably take a bag of those. And then a bag of crisps. 
I just quite like having some food because it just keeps things interesting and I just like mixing it up a bit. So yeah, with all of that stuff, that's about, so if I take eight to 10 gels, that's about 800 to 1000 calories in gels. A packet of sweets is 240. Those chews, the shop blocks are 190 calories. Two packs of crisps is about 200. And then that whole bag of nuts is just over 600 calories. So that's about 2000 calories worth of food that I'll be taking with me. Um, and then the rest I'll make up from the tailwind of my drinks. And then I'll use the aid stations uh, to have Coke as well. Cause I, I really like having Coke. Cause it, it gives me such a boost and it's, I don't normally have it in like day-to-day -day life so it's quite a treat um so yeah i'll have about two two thousand calories on me and then the rest i'll just look to get from aid stations so yeah this is roughly what it looks like so this is about two thousand calories so i've got about eight gels here uh and then my salted nuts a packet of shop blocks two bags of crisps and then a bag of sweets um, and then as I said, I'll make up the rest of it from Tailwind at the A stations and then some Coke to kind of hopefully get it up to more about 3000 calories for the day. And um, just some ideas of some other stuff to try, uh, things like malt loaf, baby food, more like natural gels like um, spring energy gels or Huma gels, they're kind of a bit less, well they've got like more natural ingredients like rice and real fruit and stuff. So they're, they can be quite good peanut butter and jam wraps, salty potatoes, dried fruit, uh, but be aware that they're quite high in fibre. Um, pretzels, chocolate bars, literally the list is endless. So yeah, this whole thing is just about finding something that works for you. Um, there really is no right and wrong here. Just to finish off, I wanted to just give a few little tips um, cause yeah, I've done about 20 of these now. Um, so I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on what works and what doesn't. Um, but tip number one, check in advance what's gonna be on offer at the aid stations. It just gives you a chance to practice with those things if you are planning on using the aid stations. Um, for this race, you're not allowed any crew, so you have to be completely either self-sufficient or use the aid stations. So if you don't wanna be taking loads of stuff with you, then just make sure that you check what's gonna be on offer. Um, so yeah, I'll be, as I said, I'll be using the Tailwind, the Coke, and then probably some fruit if they've got some, um, just cause yeah, I'm not gonna take fruit with me cause it will get all crushed up in my bag. But yeah, check in advance what's gonna be on offer at the A stations. Um, and then in terms of actually eating, I would just try and, <laughs> it's easier said than done, but try and eat at regular intervals, like eat little and often. Um, if you leave it too long between snacks, then it will probably be too late and then you're gonna be that person dry heaving on the side of the trail and it's not a good place to be. So yeah, it's, I don't know where I heard it, but someone said to me, food equals mood. And I always just think about that because if you're feeling rough, it's probably because you've not had enough food. Um, and then the last one is just to, I know we hear it all the time, but it's just to practice it in your long run. So you're like anything, you're, gut can actually be trained so if you don't do any practice and then you come to race day and then you shove loads of food down of course you're going to be that person in the bushes not having a good time so just make sure that you practice at every opportunity especially on those long runs um, but also make a note of what works and what doesn't so I've built up <laughs> a massive excel spreadsheet of like loads of foods and stuff that works because it as I said before it is such an individual thing. What works for me will probably not work for you and vice versa. So it's just about finding that combination of stuff that works for you. And yeah, trial and error really is the only way with stuff like this. So the more you can get out there and practice, the better. Right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that useful. As I said, please let me know down below any food or drinks that you tend to use for these long runs and ultras. Um, because yeah, as I said, it will really help other runners watching this. So let me know down there. Please subscribe if you haven't already. This will probably be my last video now before the race. Thank you so much for all of your support so far on the other two videos in the series. I did ideally want to make it a bit longer than just three videos, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll, uh, I'll see you on the other side. Wish me luck, bye.